If you want to get to an advanced level in pickleball, there's some key skills that you'll need to develop over time. Well, in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to take you through exactly what those skills are and how to actually learn them through practice. If you can get these down in a few months, you'll look like a completely different player. And whether or not you're a 3.0, 3.5, or you're just getting started, everything that I'm going to go through will still be helpful. So like I said, what's important to keep in mind is that you have to know that if you want to get to a higher level, you need to add on an extra layer of skills. Right now, if you're a 3.0 or 3.5 player, you probably already have a few skills, right? You probably already have the ability to hit hard drives and to hit hard from the net and try to end points that way. Hitting hard is actually generally a little bit easier to get the hang of than our more controlled shots. Question is though, what skills do you need to get to that 4.0 level? The first skill that you need if you want to become a 4.0 player is you need to be able to respond to your opponent's power. So if your opponent goes really hard at you, especially when you're at the kitchen, you need to have the reaction time to not only get their shots back, but to hit them back well so that you disarm them and you take away their advantage in the point. The next skill that you'll need to develop is the ability to consistently hit the ball into the kitchen with soft touch. So to do this, you have to develop a lot of control with hitting the ball softly. So this is what it's really hard to get the hang of if you haven't played any pickleball before. So if you're a 3-0 player, maybe you started playing in the last year, you might not have the ability to do this. But watch, even as I back up, I need to have the ability to hit the ball into the kitchen. So up there I was dinking. These are obviously called drops. So if you want to get to that higher level, 4-0 level, you have to understand that using the kitchen is extremely important. And it's pretty much impossible to get past the 4-0 level if you can't do that. The next skill that you have to have at the 4-0 level is the ability to end points when you get easy shots. So when I say easy shots, I'm referring to higher balls. So if I'm at the kitchen and I get a ball that's above the height of my chest, I want the point to end on that shot. So let me show you an example of that. Drew hits me a high ball, the point should end right there and then. I see a lot of players at the 3-0 level that get the higher ball, but they either don't hit it hard enough or they hit it right to their opponents and they let them back in the point. So I'm gonna teach you exactly how to end points efficiently. And the last skill that you definitely need to have to get to the 4-0 level is the right positioning. So an advanced positioning strategy. When I watch a lot of 3.0 players play, I see them sort of just drifting around. They're not necessarily always in the right position. But when you watch a 4.0 plus player play, they pretty much always know exactly where they need to be. Now I'm gonna take you through each of these skills and how to practice them one by one. First though, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you do so. Every week we make a new video that's pretty much a free private lesson. So subscribe so you don't miss out. So the first skill we're gonna go over is the ability to react to hard shots and counter attack. This is arguably the most important to becoming an advanced level player. And the reason for that is that if your opponent realizes that you can't defend hard shots, then they have no reason to get into the dinking game, into the soft game. Because for, to them, it's more worth it to just go for hard shots and play more like a banger because it's gonna be a lot easier to beat you that way. So in order for you to get your games to an advanced playing style where you're doing a lot of dinking and you're having the, the long rallies at the kitchen, you have to be able to defend hard shots or it's just not gonna happen. And the two places that you need to be able to do this from are when your opponents are back hitting hard drives like this or when they're up and using speed ups like this. Technically though, when we're waiting for these volleys, we want to have the same exact setup. So we always want to have that wide base like this that we can react in either direction. We want to be waiting with our paddle up like this. This is called a ready position. The slight turn towards the left. So I'm a righty. So I turn my paddle a little bit towards the left like this while I'm waiting because that makes it a little bit quicker for me to defend my body with my backhand. So it's super important that you defend your body with your backhand. And when your opponent hits it really hard at you, you don't have enough time to take a big backswing. So I'm not gonna be going super far behind my body. It's going to be a very quick motion where everything's out in front. I'm not gonna use much wrist because that makes it harder to time it too. I'm just gonna sort of block these shots back. Not a lot of wrist action, not a lot of swing. When I'm defending hard shots, I want very compact, stiffer motions. So if you're at the 3-0 level, you've probably seen this situation a million times. I'm up. My opponent's back and he's going to try to use hard drives that let him move forward. And if I give him high balls like that, it makes it really easy for him to move in and crush that next shot. So with that technique I just showed you, my goal is not only to get his hard balls back, it's to keep them nice and low. I also want to try to get them at the depth of his feet. So what I mean by that is as he starts to move forward, I want to make it as difficult as I can on him by getting my volleys right at the depth of his feet 
because obviously he has to take a lot of time to bend down to get those shots. So let's see an example of that. Drew's gonna go hard at me. I'm gonna go right at his feet, try to keep him back, which makes it really hard for him to move forward using drives. If you aren't reacting quickly and you're getting the high easy shots, it's gonna be very easy and simple for your opponents to hit hard drives and take control of the point. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the harder the shot is coming at you on a volley, the stiffer you need to be holding your paddle. Because if I'm holding my paddle really loose and he hits the ball at me really hard, the paddle is going to shake a lot in my hand. So when he hits it really hard, I have a very firm grip on the paddle and I use almost like a tennis volley motion where I'm just barely blocking it like this. When your opponent's up, it's the same idea. You need to be even faster in terms of how quickly you react to their hard shots. What you don't want to do is react slowly and give them a high easy shot so that they can kill the next ball. Ideally, you get your counterattacks nice and low so that they can't do anything on the next ball and you take the advantage in the point. To be able to do that consistently though, you need to be able to react fast, which comes from having the right technique and doing the right practice. So looking at this drill we're doing right now, seems simple, but it's one of the best ways to increase your reaction time. If you're a 3-0 player, you might actually struggle a little bit to do this drill at a decent pace without missing the ball or hitting it all over the place. So a 4-0 player can definitely do a drill like this, where we're just doing volleys back and forth out of the air without missing too often while going at a decent pace. And an even higher level player will be able to do this drill even faster. So the better that you get at this sport, the faster you should be able to react to those types of volleys. So next time that you're about to play a game, grab a partner and try doing this drill right before where you're just going fast through a bunch of volleys. You can even keep trying to increase the pace until you miss steadily throughout the rally. That's a good way to increase your threshold for harder shots. So make sure to send this video to your partner so you can do that drill together. So another great drill to get faster hands, and you can do this drill on your own, is to just hop on a wall. I got the Dink Master here. And to start volleying like this. So if you're at the 3-0 level, it might look something like this. But as you get more comfortable, you want to be able to go really fast off of a wall without losing your control. What you can even do is go closer to the wall, which makes things go even quicker. So just like when we're rallying with our partner, it's okay to go so fast that you eventually miss. That's how you increase your threshold for speed. So if you have a good wall at home, you can do it on that or you can do it on the Dink Master. If you guys like that wall drill, make sure to click the thumbs up and like this video. It really helps our channel grow. The next skill though that you need to get to that 4.0 level is the ability to use your soft touch and use the kitchen. So from the front of that court, that looks like this. So this is dinking obviously, right? At a higher level, you're gonna see a lot of dinking rallies. If you're at the 3.0 level, you might not always have these during your games, but at a 4.0 level, it's probably happening almost every single point. And the reason that we do this dinking at a higher level is 4.0 players, like we just went over, have the ability to defend against harder shots. So if you're hitting a shot hard and it's below the height of the net against a good player, they're probably gonna crush it, right? So we get into this dinking situation because we're looking for that higher ball that we can kill and they're not gonna be able to get back, which doesn't happen that often once your opponent's reactions are really fast. From the back of the court, we use this skill to hit the ball into the kitchen for our drops and our resets. So back here, the reason we use the kitchen's a little different and it's to move forward. So if I can get Drew to reach and have to hit up on the ball, that gives me a ticket to move into the kitchen and get into that neutral situation where I can use my dinks to attack. If you're a 3.0 player though, you probably don't think it's super easy to have that much control in every situation on the court. So I'm gonna take you through exactly what you need to make it happen. It all starts with your technique. So whenever you're trying to hit the ball soft and pick a ball, your motion's gonna be really simple. So I don't want a big backswing, don't want a big follow through, and I don't wanna be using too much wrist. So when I'm hitting a dink, pretty much all my power is gonna come from my shoulder. And when I do it like this, it gives me a lot more control because there's only really one variable in terms of what affects the speed of the ball. If I'm constantly flailing around using too much wrist, it's gonna make it really hard for me to get into that golden range where Drew needs to hit up on the ball. So my dinks look like this, aiming for that back portion of the kitchen. My stroke is very simple. I actually make it a point to try to use as little motion as I possibly can. Remember, don't want a big backswing, it just makes everything more challenging in terms of your control. From the back of the court, the technique is the same idea. When I'm hitting my drop, I essentially have the same technique as my dink, except I have a little bit bigger backswing, a little bit bigger follow through. I also am probably turning sideways like I do on a forehand drive. I'm not gonna be facing the court every time like I do on my dinks. So drops from back here look like this. 
And these are really challenging. So if you're a 3-0 player, it's gonna require a lot of practice to get that skill down. So to practice your drops, the best drill to do is to just have a partner standing directly in front of you and have them hit balls deep to you while you try to get it into the kitchen. Okay, so I'm aiming for the back portion of that kitchen using my slice drop here. And we're just gonna have a rally like that. If you're just starting off, you're at the 3.0 level, you might not be able to make that many of them in. You might only make maybe 25% of them into the kitchen, which is totally fine, right? That's why we're out here to practice. And the goal is to eventually be making 80, 90%. And once you get really comfortable with it, you can have your partner start to move you around and make things more difficult. So what you'll realize is that drops are significantly easier to make in when the shot that's coming at you is nice and slow. As it starts to get harder though, and you start to have to move more, it becomes increasingly difficult to stay consistent. And because of that, our footwork when we're doing drops is super important. So our footwork, we wanna get behind the ball. So we wanna get behind every shot so that we have the ability to move forward. So I never really wanna be falling backwards or to the side when I'm hitting my drop. Ideally, I get into position early where I can make contact with the ball out in front of me to the side and I can rock forward. So watch my feet and see how I do that. Wherever Drew puts me on the court, I'm always trying to be right behind the ball so I can move forward through it. Barely made that one over. Always trying to get that rocking motion through the ball. I see a lot of 3.0 players that react late to their opponent's shot and they try to go for a drop, which looks something like this. So they're like falling backwards. They're not in position, they're falling to the sides. In that case, it's gonna be really challenging to be accurate and get your balls into the kitchen. When you're dinking, the same thing applies. You need to be situated with your footwork so that every time your opponent hits you a difficult dink, you're not popping the ball up and you're getting your shots into the kitchen and keeping your opponent from being able to attack. So my footwork when I'm dinking looks like this. Generally, I wanna have one foot planted at all times and I sort of move in a pivoting motion, taking one big step in either direction. You see, if I have to move out to this side, all I'm gonna do is take one big lunging step then I always go back to my home base in the center. So what I don't wanna do is be like this, where I'm off balance, doing a lot of crossover steps. Your home base is like this, and to cover your half of the court, you're gonna take these big lunging steps in either direction. Occasionally, you might have to take a little bit of a shuffle, but 90% of the time, you should be good taking one lunging step in either direction. And this makes it a lot easier to get back into position quickly so you can be ready if your opponents hit a hard volley. So let me show you how that looks. Drew's gonna get me out of position and he's gonna go hard, but I'm back in my ready position way before he even hits the ball. So I'm in a good position to react. And while rallying with your partner is a great way to practice your dinks or drops, you can also learn the skill of hitting the ball in the kitchen by just getting on a wall, making sure there's a line for the height of the net and a line for keeping the ball low. So you see on here I got the net at three feet, and I gotta keep it low line up here, which makes a one foot gap, a one foot window that I try to get my dinks between. So if you guys can go like this and keep the ball consistently below that green line, you probably can dink in your games and you're probably a 3.5 to 4.0 player. So I've had a lot of players that get a dink master, they start dinking on it and they're maybe a 3.0 player, but after a few months, they get so comfortable with dinking and with having enough feel to keep the ball in this range that they start to get into the 3.5, 4.0 more advanced range. So if you guys wanna check out the Dink Master, head to our site or click the link in the description. So if you can respond to your opponent's hard balls and you know how to use the kitchen, you're already 80%, 90% of the way there to becoming a 4.0 player. The last piece of the puzzle though, is being able to end points when you get an easy shot. So a lot of the time I see a 3.0 player get a nice easy shot and do something like that. They don't do much with the ball, they hit it right to their opponent and they lose their advantage in the point. When a 4.0 player gets an easy shot, it looks more like this. I put more power on the ball, I made it a little bit more difficult so that Drew really couldn't do anything. It's really challenging for him to return a ball like that. So in terms of ending a point, there's a few key elements that you always wanna be focusing on. And the first, as you just saw, was power. So if you have a ball that's above the height of your shoulder, the harder you can hit it, the better, right? If it's in this range, you can't hit it too hard because it might go out. But at this height, I can draw a straight line from my paddle to the ground. So the harder I can hit the shot, the more challenging it's gonna make things for my opponent. So you're probably wondering when you get a ball at this height, how hard should you go? 
Well, obviously you don't want to try to hit the ball as hard as you can, because when you try to hit the ball as hard as you possibly can, it greatly increases the chances that you're going to miss. So when you have a nice and high floater ball, I like to say that you should go for 85% power because you get a lot of the benefit of going super hard, but you don't risk losing your form and missing. And a really important thing to keep in mind is when you're hitting a shot high at around right here or above you, if you're hitting a smash, you never want to take your head off of the ball as you're hitting it. I see so many players that are hitting the high ball and then they look down as they're hitting it. So watch as I hit the ball. I keep my head still throughout the whole motion so that my paddle goes clean through my target. You don't want to be looking at where you're hitting the ball right after you make contact with it. That's a huge problem that I see players have. The next thing that we need to be thinking about is our placement. So when we have a high, easier shot, we don't really need to reinvent the wheel with our placement. There's a few key targets that are going to work time and time again. And the main thing that we need to be thinking about is looking for open sections of the court. So on the other side of the court, I only have Drew right now. But if I get a high shot and Drew's more towards the middle, let's say it comes to my forehand, I'm gonna see a really big section of the court right here on the sideline that I can go to, which makes it really hard for Drew to get there in time. If you see a big gap in the middle of the court, I can go there too. So if there's a big gap between both the players, that presents a good opportunity for me to go right down the middle and end the point. In terms of depth, I always like to aim for the depth of my opponent's feet, just in case I accidentally hit the ball to them, because if I hit the ball to them, that makes it as difficult as it possibly can for them to get it back. So if Drew's coming in a little bit, and I see an open gap to the side of the court, I'm gonna go right at the depth of his feet. Cause see, I didn't necessarily get it super close to the sideline, but because it went right at his feet, he still has to spend a lot of time reaching down to get the ball down there. If I go higher than the depth of his feet, one, I might hit the ball long, and two, I might give him an easy volley where it's, just a lot, it's a lot easier for him to hit the ball at that height than at the height of his feet. So I'm always better off aiming for the depth of my opponent's feet regardless of where he is on the court. So if he comes in more, I wanna go maybe for a shot like this, where I'm going right at his feet, he has no time to react, and I win the point. Another important thing to keep in mind in terms of your placement is the more off the court, or the more to the sides of the court you're hitting your put away shots, the better opportunity you have to go for an angle. So if Drew hits a really high ball to my backhand here, I have a super good opportunity to go for a hard angle, right? If I'm in the middle of the court from here, I can still go for an angle, but if I draw a line from my contact point to Drew, it's gonna go more to him. So from this position, I might actually be better off going more towards the center of the court. A lot of it depends on where your opponents are standing, but just keep in mind that if you're from the sides of the court more, the angles are more effective. And the last mistake that I see players making on high easy shots is they get too casual or they get too reckless. So sometimes you'll see a player get a nice high easy shot and they're acting like they already won the point. Next thing you know though, their opponents are back in the point and they're no longer in an advantageous position. Make sure you get right into the ball, focus on your footwork and have defined targets and know that you might have to hit a few shots in a row. As you saw there, Drew got my first hard ball back, but because I was engaged and with my footwork, I was able to get under that next shot and go for that angle smash. And you definitely don't want to get too reckless. So if Drew gives me a nice high smash right here and I go for a crazy angle like I just did there, sure I made that shot there, but it was lucky, right? A very high percentage of the time, if I'm going for an angle inside the kitchen from that position, I'm gonna miss the shot. So you always wanna go for the safe bet when you have an easy shot. So the safe bet, like I said, is generally to go at the depth of their feet, give yourself a few feet of space from the line, so some margin for air, and just go for the gap that you see. So if I see the middle's open, I'm gonna go at the depth of his feet, down the middle. I'm not gonna go right on the baseline, I'm gonna give myself a few feet of margin, from each line, right? And go for the opening that I see. I don't wanna be going for some crazy angle or drop shot volley, right? I just wanna end the point in the most efficient way I can. So guys, if you can get all the three skills we just went through down, you're probably a 4.0 plus player. And like I said, the best way to get the hang of them is with practice. The best kind of practice though, which a lot of players don't get, is not any sort of drill. It's just to play games against players who are at a higher level than you. So I highly advise you try to start scheduling games against people at that level, because when you play them, they're gonna force you to have to use these skills, which will make you develop them way faster. So get out your phone and start scheduling some games. And the last skill that you really need to get to the 4.0 plus level is to have an advanced positioning strategy and an advanced strategy in general. If you wanna watch a full video on that, watch this. When I first started pickleball, there was very little information online about how to properly play and strategize. 